Hello everyone, this is the LEGO Star Wars Snoke's Throne Room set, something that definitely needed to happen. And I'm happy to report on first impression that this looks much better than I expected, and it has a lot more features than I expected. There's a very dynamic shape here to the entire thing as a display. It's a proper diorama, and it just has you know these two angles here, it has these angles in, and it just looks so much better than most of the generally rectangular based dioramas. And you know, some of them have kind of gotten into more of a hexagonal or octagonal sort of shape. But just on display, first look at this, it looks really awesome to me. And I'm happy to have it. But let's take a look at the finer details to see if that holds up. First off, Snoke's throne itself obviously is able to rotate around. Honestly, to me, doesn't look all that impressive from the front or from the side. Its best side is the back. Look at all the little greebly details back there, including the light gray colored roller skate pieces. There is one of those to spare included in the set. They even have a little, little bit of uh, trans red in there, which catches light very nicely. It's good that this is able to rotate around. I actually like the look of the throne better when he's not in it just has some nice shaping. And they did an interesting thing here. Well, a couple interesting things. First of all, he is designed to, to sit leaning back, which is a good idea. I mean, obviously he can get up like this. That's also a good look, but they made it so that all this just lifts straight up. It's not attached with any studs whatsoever. It just lifts up and then that gives you a little bit of storage space down in there, supposedly, on either side of a little Technic mechanism there. It's not very useful storage space, but, I mean, they had this area there, so might as well let it be usable. If you don't want to use it, you don't have to. This is ringed by three different uh, prints of stickers, so they are stickers, but they are uh, three different versions of them. One for this side of the back, one for this side of the back, and then the other two towards the front are identical. And then you may have just seen me hit this little thing over here. It's the most basic of action features. Just a basic figure catapult. Well, that didn't work so well. I try uh, like this. If I can get, there we go. <laughs> Flips up. I believe there's a way that you can get this to launch the figure forward. I haven't. She keeps getting uh, launched back. I haven't uh, haven't gotten it just right myself, but there it comes out this way. There is there is a way. There is a way, but I don't know the way. Sorry. These little things, these little structures that were in the room. Well, they're they're much larger in the the room in the movie, but I appreciate their inclusion here. I like how they're actually built down beneath the floor, and they look good. Whatever they are, uh, they look good and. You know, you can hit them and break little pieces of them off. I was more interested in the Oculus. That was just an interesting looking thing. They do not include an attendant in this set, the dudes in purple, to be looking through it. But for something that's really scaled down, it looks pretty cool. It just uses a single sticker back there looking at the star field. So that works out. There's actually another small action feature built into the floor here, allowing Snoke to perform a force pull against Ray. You just pull on this little awkward round thing back here. At least it's the same color as the space beneath. That's good. And it just allows you to slide her towards you like that just a little bit. Uh, it, it's not very far. And the strangest thing about it is that it opens up a gap. That's just weird. Also, there's a little bit of gap to the front of that little bit of a platform, but that doesn't bug me as much as this does. It's, it, it just looks more like it's a sliding trapdoor feature than anything. These architectural elements on the sides, these beams look very nice to me. I just really like their shape. They look a little bit imposing. They look a little bit interesting. Like I said, they just provide some dynamism to this scene. It's definitely a shame that we don't get the menacing and continuous silky red going around this whole room. They've only just brought that into the space beneath the floor, you know, which is a hint. Certainly would have required a ton of pieces to bring that in, but it is a shame that it's not here. I don't feel myself missing it too much. I feel like there is enough red here in general, but of course it would have been nice to get more. But these shapes are really nice, and they do have just a little 
little panel at the back of each. They're just mirrored from side to side, plus a little bit of additional built-in storage here. There's another spot where they had the ability to include some storage, so they did. Here's a suggestion of one of the Praetorian Guard weapons. The other side, meanwhile, has a couple things in it. It's got a goblet, a chalice for Snoke, and also a pair of handcuffs to use for Ray. And then you can, you know, take those off later. And then they have the turbo lift at the back. You can call it an elevator if you want, but it's a turbo lift. It's fancier than an elevator. This actually looks pretty good uh, relative to pretty much every other turbo lift build they've ever done. I feel like this has more depth and uh, more detail around it, above it, kind of captures that space a little bit better than normal and they have just the simple mechanism to rotate this around and reveal one figure who came up the elevator. Nobody understands me. Of course the ideal scenario would have been accommodation for two figures but that would have required a much larger thing and I think that for the overall scale of the entire scene this was a fine compromise. It is a little rougher than usual getting those stickers in there though because they need to go against a, a strange inverted curve and they're rather large. They take up most of the space inside of those relatively new curved panels that are two by two in cross section. You should take a look at the non-camera friendly angles as well because the box art and official images will never show stuff like this. The great news here is that it doesn't look bad. They don't have a ton of blue Technic pieces and tan filler pieces and yellow axles and stuff. You know, it's a pretty consistent color scheme, so uh, I feel like the designers are getting the message about that, and they're doing a much better job about, you know, just using colors that make sense, at least on the outsides of builds. For figures, of course, Kylo with Scar and no helmet, which is appropriate. Rey with the right robes for this part of the timeline. Uh, I don't think she necessarily needs a face in this particular scene that has just a little bit of joy in it, but that's not that big of a deal. It looks like the, uh, the the lips are printed just a little bit weird there, but it's not bad. These are, you know, the right figures to include for this scene, in my opinion. And you get that face, which is certainly useful for this scene. That one is more appropriate. I would have preferred, you know, if they had the budget to do a, a new head for her, you know, if this was kind of the better or the, the nicer, the kinder looking expression, and if they then had more of a proper struggling, fighting expression for Rey. Snoke is Snoke, and there's nothing new with this figure, but it's great to be able to get him in a set that is not over $100. Looking at you, Star Destroyer, or uh, Battle Cruiser, I guess. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's a good figure. I thought it was a good figure before. I still think it's a good figure. I like the print around the back of the head. I like the two tones for the gold with the gold printed on top of gold. And yeah, the only thing off about this is the height, you know. Ideally to you know provide some kind of difference between his height and standard human height, add one or possibly even two uh, gold one by one plates under each foot. Uh, they probably could have used longer legs here or something, but it's it's okay. It's not bad. I just you know, would have preferred a little more height. These Praetorian guards, though! Ooh! Yes! Ah, that just scarlet red just shines here. It feels redder than usual. Uh, really nice sculpts, although the two of them use the exact same head mold. Uh, that's, that's too bad for a, a marquee collector slash display set like this covering such an important scene, such a memorable scene, I really wish they had you know, spent the money to do three molds to get the three different helmet styles. But then again, we only get two figures here. Uh, everything about them is identical except for the weapons. Uh, you know, I already showed you one of the options, one of the additional options for the weapons included in the scene. These are printed down the backs very nicely. That's above and beyond what I expected. I did not think they were going to print the robes down the backs of, of the the leg pieces. You know, you don't get any articulation with those leg parts, but they sure do look good, uh, I think. These are just great looking figures. I've always liked the red guards 
from, from the Star Wars universe. And these are no exceptions. Those lightsaber hilts are, I believe, new in just a regular red color, which is great. And there was one spare included in this set. I've been seeing less and less spare pieces in Lego sets lately. Thankfully, they included the red heads beneath, just regular heads. So where you see, you know, some, some of that head space beneath the helmets or around the helmets, you don't see you know anything anything weird you don't see anything inappropriate so that's good these are great looking i only wish they had included more of them like uh at least four <laughs> you know at least half at least half of them and certainly all three of the the molds would have been would have been worth the extra cost in my opinion speaking of cost can somebody anybody tell me why this costs 70 dollars us can somebody, anybody tell me why this costs 70 euro? It's less than 500 pieces. It has five figures and only one design for the Praetorian Guards. It just doesn't make sense. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll give them this. On a relative basis, this has a much better value proposition at its current price even than Battle on Takodana. Battle on Takodana still definitely holds the holds the championship belt for terrible value this is a much better looking scene than that it's way more displayable it's way more playable even and comes with just a better selection of figures overall uh, that one costs ten dollars less than this but i feel like this gives you like 50 percent more goodness and more good stuff overall but still seventy dollars Nah, that's just kind of, that's kind of ludicrous, actually. Uh, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Now, if they had included, like I said, at least four Praetorian Guards with three different helmet styles, I would consider it. It would still definitely be a stretch, but I would consider it. Uh, and if I wasn't a reviewer, I would consider buying it just to to have uh, i think that that would be an acceptable level of of being overpriced <laughs> but 70 dollars with just two praetorian guards the things that i want the most here and uh yeah only one design of them just don't get it i just don't get it nope ah this is this is really rough because there's a lot of desire for this scene. There's a lot of desire for this set. And uh, I think overall it's well done. In my head, I'm just trying to run the mental calculations to see how I could make this make sense to me as a consumer at its current price. And I, I can't. I really, I really cannot. I'm not being dramatic here. I'm not, you know, just spewing hate on this because Disney and corporate greed and The Last Jedi is the worst thing ever. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Star Wars. I enjoyed The Last Jedi. I like Lego. I like collecting stuff. I like this set. I don't like the price. And uh, yeah, that's, that's just how it is. Those are my thoughts. So if you have anything that you would like to say about it, as always, please feel free to leave a comment down below, including if you disagree with my opinions here, or if you know and can understand a reasonable reason, yes, a reasonable reason, that this costs $70 and 70 euro. I'd, I'd like to hear it, but I have a feeling there's just going to be a lot of sarcasm and cynicism, which in this case is deserved. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.